the two greatest words in sports, Game 7, and we got it in the Stanley Cup Final, and the Florida Panthers prevailed. Yeah, um, they avoided disaster. It was like, it was insane. Everybody thought it was going to be a long series, but no, it's just not the way how it went, right? So that, that was the big thing. Like No one was surprised it was Game 7. People were surprised how it got to Game 7, right? Yeah, that's fair. And um, yeah, like, and the game itself lived up to to the potential. Like It wasn't like... 2011, I guess, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, no, it was a back and close game, back and forth. The goalies did their thing as well, right? Like when the Panthers scored, I'm like, damn, I think the Oilers are done because essentially that's how the Panthers won their games. But Oilers bounced back with a bad uh, defensive coverage by the Panthers, and then one end it was almost the Oilers goal. Essentially, the other end, Reinhardt scores short side, and then third period was the third period. But that short side goal is the game winner of the Stanley Cup final. Yeah. So imagine just like what's going through your head when you score a game-winning goal. I know it's like... West Van Zone. Yeah, West Van Zone. Sam Reinhardt has scored a game-winning goal in Game 7 of a Stanley Cup final. Just that moment, just yeah. that saying itself is just incredible. But yeah, let's, let's get into not just the game specifically, let's talk about the Florida Panthers, right? Um, Obviously, this is their second time in the finals. A team that I was very high on. A team that dominated their way through even though they had to they were down in games or they were down in um series, series yeah until game four right maybe game let's just say game five like, yeah they got their ass kicked in game four i get that so it's until game four still game four still but like game five is what solidified it they were like oh damn right and to the point where the, this was like a pick em at this point like everybody thought that even though florida was home edmonton should be the favorites because of the momentum rolling into this game Right, game six. Uh, I think we covered game the other games. It was three two when we talked last. Yeah, hockey, right. Yeah. So game six, like we're not gonna recap it. It was like no point. We didn't watch it. <laughs> was Edmonton's like, <laughs> depth is the, the reason why it, it happened, right? Because McDavid wasn't good in that. For Zero. his standards, wasn't good. Zero points. The reason why I'm saying wasn't good is because at the end of the day, if he's on the ice, you still pay attention to McDavid. McDavid's good. Every time he steps on the ice. Yeah. So the only way you judge my day is by points now, essentially. <laughs> yeah. That's just how it is. <laughs> but uh, game seven, same thing. Like, he, was, he wasn't he was the greatest, right? Again, it could be fatigue. It just could be Florida kind of came back in game seven. Like, they were in game ones, two, and three. Their defensive selves, right? Because that third period was a defensive masterclass. Um, Bob Rowski obviously kind of came back. Not kind of. He did come back. He came back <laughs> um, as Disrespect well. my boy. Sure. <laughs> but he came back, right? And... Um, yeah, no, so Florida exacted their revenge, I guess how you want to say from last yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, you know. And handled business, right? Edmonton, here's the thing. Edmonton, Vegas, same thing, you know, they, their revenge on how they, everyone. <laughs> yeah, uh, they avoided, obviously, disaster, like I said, but they avoided their name to be the history books at all. That's all, yeah. Because here's the thing, right? 2011, no one talks about the Canucks almost blowing a 3-0 lead, right? They talk about what happened after the game. Which is a riot. <laughs> no, 3 0 Chicago. That was oh, that Chicago one. Yeah, they, I, I, well, I, I, 3 0 against Boston. Yeah, no, but I'm no. talking about like, uh, yeah. 3 0 3 0 against Chicago, right? Like, people, like, I bring it up time to time. I'm like, bro, imagine if we lost that game seven. You know what BX has said on the panel? Alex Burroughs essentially saved their team in terms yeah. of everyone got contract extension that offseason. Yeah. If Burroughs didn't score, everyone would have been cut <laughs> or no, traded away. Nobody talks about the first round of that series. People talk about what happened in Game 7, right? Uh, in the, sorry, the Stanley Cup Final after Game yeah. 7. Same thing on this side. Now, no one, 20 years from now, no one's going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember the time Boston um, blew, uh, sorry, the Florida Panthers. blew yeah. a 3-0 lead, but only to win Game 7. No one's cared. They're going to care that 2023, 2024, 2024 exactly, that champion is a Florida Panthers. So, you know what the most difficult thing to do in hockey and in the sports is to come back from 0-3. The second most difficult thing to do is to win a game when you don't believe in yourself, you're not playing your best hockey, you're lacking confidence, you have zero momentum, and on top of that, to the point where I picked the Edmonton Oilers to make the comeback as well. This is Florida. If I lose believe in you, there's something wrong in you. This is Florida. And the Florida first. Panthers, they were something wrong with the Florida Panthers. This is Panthers. Florida Panthers' first adversity of the playoffs, realistically. Yeah, exactly. yeah you could say the 2 1 against. The, that was an adversity, man. They were dominating. <laughs> still, right? At the end of the day, it could have been down 3-1 because it was the third game was overtime. That is true. Or yeah. the fourth game was overtime. That is true. But, but well, yeah, when you're talking about this Panthers team, it was just dominance, and then it just withered away. They got complacent. They didn't play the if, game. If, like, this this Panthers team, this is how you describe them. If they have the lead heading into a third period, 
you might as well not play the third period because the Panthers hold on to lead. It was until that. And that was a case in this Stanley Cup final as well. Game- the Panthers were coming into the third period with leads. That's when they were at their best. The reason why they lost the three games, they were nowhere near. Game three, third period is where you kind of saw that go away, right? Because that's when Edmonton started making that comeback, which was a little questionable. Yeah. On their end, especially if Bobrovsky didn't make that insane save, it would it would have been four four or whatever this score. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Right, four four. And um, yeah. But at the end of the day, when they what, like forget about the series for a second, talking about Florida as a whole, what. What's gonna? What's your takeaways from the Florida season, right? For me, it's just straight up how dominant they were defensively, um, and how physical and big and physical they were, which is why I had I was confident yeah. in them winning for, the Stanley Cup from the beginning. For me, it's uh, they win in multiple ways. They, no matter what happens, they'll find a way to win, and that's how the Florida Panthers were, right? Some of those wins were get carried by Bobrovsky. Other ones were like, "Now nah, we're gonna outscore you," like a six-five shootout. Right, other ones just like you know, game seven, hold it down defensively and uh, win by a goal, which is what they exactly did. They find ways to win, and that also you know speaks to their dominance as well. That's why they're so dominant because no matter what happens, it just felt like whatever situation is going, whatever the situation is, the Florida Panthers were just built for it, and uh, that's just how it. I view their season essentially coming into the season without Eckblad and Montour, especially what happened last year, where like. Um, all these injuries with Kachaka being out, Ekblad playing with dislocated Something. everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dislocated everything. <laughs> and uh, they didn't complain. They came back. They said like business. They went on the revenge tour. The revenge tour is now over. And the Florida Panthers are your Stanley Cup champions. How happy are you for Paul Maurice? Very happy. Uh, this guy kind of like a WWE promo at the end where he's like listing like how Lynn Bellavo and like, like Maurice is on the... They it felt like very WWE. It was his dad as well. Yeah, that's true. Dad. But yeah, uh, very happy for him. Obviously, it's something about coaches that you're like they, after they win like a long uh, while, like Barry Trotz. Barry Trotz was you one. got um, Andy Reid. Yeah. Right, and then I'm looking in the NBA right now. Who could be the NBA guy? But uh, what's his name? Dusty uh, from um, uh, yeah, Dusty Baker. Dusty yeah. Baker, right? NBA. Um, Rick Carlisle, I guess you could say. Yeah. Maybe right, but when 2011. Yeah. So Paul Maurice was the most has the most games without winning a Stanley Cup. Yeah. And in NHL history. I think uh Trotz was on that list. I think Pat Burns was on the list. I forgot who the other guy was, but I feel very happy for Paul Maurice, obviously like it's just fun seeing I know like I hate seeing the teams I hate win. And I'm not saying I hate the Oilers, but I'm thinking if it was like a Bruins or something, a part of me was like still feels happy in terms of like, you know, these guys' dreams are now a reality. You know, they're like acting like little kids now, like yeah, anyone would sure. when you get like something amazing happen to them. And that's that's just like the best part of watching any type it's, of final. It's sports fandom, right? Like, yeah. okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this right now. People are saying like, you know, our whole family essentially was yelling at me, especially, but even kind of you, of why are you not rooting for Edmonton, Ca- Canada's team? Like, it's sports fandom, right? This isn't the only Canadian team in the NHL. This Canadian team beat our favorite team, who happens to be Canadian, exactly, right? Especially if you're a rival. Yeah. Right. So Calgary and people are, you know, people like Sid Sixero, um, I think or Bar Downs, Jesse Pollock, like I gotta respect these guys for what they've done in their creative spaces and whatever they do. I disagreed with like, oh, if you're if, unless you're a Calgary Flames fan, you should be rooting for the Oilers. Listen, I, I'll tell you right now, I was heavily rooting for the Panthers. I'm gonna say that. Yeah. I know maybe I'm not sure about be admitting this on public things, but like every media platform does that. The reason for that is because we've said it before. I'm a Canadian. I want my Canadian to be beat the curse. Number two, the Oilers beat the Canucks. And it wasn't even like it was... If it, I, I would understand if we got like 4-1 or 4-2. Or like destroyed. Like totally yeah. really destroyed. Then I'm like, okay, whatever. We were right there, right? We were right there. If it wasn't for a Demko injury, if it wasn't for Pedersen playing bad or whatever. Besser. <laughs> the Besser injury. Or the Besser <laughs> of blood clot situation. Yeah. We possibly could have been in this situation, right? That being said, like, I, part, part of me, like, listen, I'm, I'm a fan of sport. I'm a fan of... Greatness. I'm a fan of historic stuff. So you're a fan of Connor McDavid. That's where we're, <laughs> like, we're gonna get to it. Uh, it. Right here, Connor McDavid ended up winning the Conn Smythe. Right. I have no issues with it. I personally still would have given my vote for Alexander Barkov because I feel like yeah. Bar- if Barkov's name is on the Conn Smythe, I feel like the underrated status would go away for sure. I feel like he's That's still fair. It's st- I feel like he will still be considered underrated. It, it a, it's a fair conversation to have if McDavid did not you know, kind of has set the most points in the playoff 
And <laughs> also the other argument, yeah, that too. But the argument of and it's also seven. it's also um, MVP of the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, surprise. I have no, I have no issues with David yeah. winning. I'm gonna make that clear. So there's, 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 it was only one man to lose. But here's the thing, right? Like part of me was like, damn, do I want Edmonton to win, right? Because of like 1942, our paternal grandparents or dad's parents were not even alive. Yeah. So. Even in our lifetime, we did not see a Canadian team win a cup. That's number one. Yeah. Let alone this in this style. Number two, Connor McDavid is the best player in hockey, right? I was happy Florida won because I was also a fan of Florida to win. Like, I love the way Florida played. And Luongo. And Luongo, obviously. <laughs> Luongo. And it was my pick to win the cup from the start of the Yeah, but like... But Connor McDavid, and definitely in your life, I'm like... Is the greatest hockey player I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, talent. Let's just say that the greatest talent, because people are gonna confuse the two. Of, like greatest yeah, player could be the uh, um the yeah uh, as fair yeah yeah right. So like down. you gotta feel for that guy. Yes, I understood he didn't. He, you know he was shut down a bit in game seven and game six. Like in game four and five, he went off right, which is why that propelled the case for him instead of Barkov right, because Bobrovsky obviously fell out of the conversation. So it it's tough right. Like I really like I was like. I would have not cared. Honestly, well, I had this discussion with you off camera. I'm like, would you rather have the Celtics win or would you rather the Oilers win? You're like, Oilers. 100%. Right? And in this case, I was like, yeah, I would be fine with it. Like, I would have, like, yes, I, I would be going against what I'm saying. I'm happy the Panthers won. I was cheering when the Panthers scored. And uh, everybody was like, oh, Canada's team, Canada's team. Listen, sports fandom at the end of the day is, that's what makes it fun. You want to be, uh, Randy Janda said it beautifully on Sports 650. If you're a soccer fan, you'll get this. There's six teams in London. Are you going to support, if you're an Arsenal fan, are you going to really support Chelsea to win the league? There's only, Or would you rather have Liverpool? There's only one case where Arsenal supported a, a London team, and that's when Tottenham played Man City this season. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, there was like, it's unheard of. Yeah. It's really unheard of. Like, if we're Man United fans. We're never going to support City. Yeah. Ever. So... Like, when it comes to that, I just wanted to get that out of the way. I, I listen. That's what makes sports fandom fun. Yeah, that's what right? it is. But now we've covered the game. Now we covered Anything about Florida, the series. Florida, Edmonton. Uh, they're freaking amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that's what that's what the Florida Panthers are. They're just fantastic. They have question marks in the offseason, which we're not, not going to get into. Who cares now. about question marks about offseason? Saying. Because when you left the Stanley Cup, all the question for marks sure. are raised. I know for sure. But um, the question I'm going to bring up is that it's not going to do with Florida Panthers because honestly, like they're so good, they actually might make it back. We've got to do one thing though. Congratulations to the Florida Panthers on winning the Stanley Cup. We'll say it right now and yeah. the Florida Panthers conversation here. But the question I'm going to bring up now is like, whatever Florida makes it back, well, who cares? You know, they've done their job. They've made two straight finals. Will the Edmonton Oilers make it back? That's the big question, yeah. in my opinion. And, uh, and also, we could tie in the question, that is Edmonton the best hope for Canada to win a Stanley Cup? And uh, both answers to that is yes. And yes, reason one, Edmonton Oilers have found a defensive game and have had a historic penalty kill in this playoff run. Reason two, you already know who they have, McDavid and Dreisaitl. And obviously there's Dreisaitl contract extension question marks. Them, but, yeah, but they're going to be on the squad next year. Yeah, We're focusing on next year. So they're on the squad. Reason three, we got to give our flowers and our props to Stuart Skinner. Because that guy, whatever he been through this playoff series and uh, playoff run, he went through the lows, he went through the highs, and uh, when it matters most, which was a Stanley Cup final, he showed up for his team, gave his team a chance every single night for their squad to win, and uh, shout out goes to Skinner, and he has proven that he could he is a starting goaltender in this league, and he can win the cup with a uh, he could be a starting goaltender to lead a team to a Stanley Cup. I don't want to say lead, but like, you know, be a part of a Stanley Cup roster and be a reason why they win. No, yeah, go not, just, not just being a role player. Sticking with Edmonton for a second, like, right, I could easily come here and just, you know, we both could troll around and make fun of Edmonton fans. Like, what a painful way to go out, right? That is a painful way to go out. It is painful. Don't get me wrong. We're not, But we're not dumb. We're not those type of fans that are really going to troll unless, you know, you're joking around with family or friends yeah, or yeah. whatever, right? Or tr random trolls on Twitter, if that's the case. Massive head, heads, uh, massive props goes to the whole organization, right? They were up, to, up until this game seven, they were undefeated in the playoffs, uh, in elimination game. Sorry, uh, Stuart Skinner was ten and zero uh, in games what four to four seven, to seven, yeah, right. And um, the other thing was the other thing that was happening in this series was there's three straight road game sevens were won by the road team, right? Sorry, three straight game sevens the Sun Cup finals were won by the road team, 
So they have all that going. Paul Maurice, undefeated and now still undefeated in Game 7. So someone's, as, as they say in boxing or UFC, someone's old, got to go. Yeah. It happened to be Edmonton's in this time and the history of Paul Maurice leveled up, right? Connor, at the end of the day, like what Edmonton did in this playoffs is insane, right? It, they After the King series, they elevated the rivalry with the Canucks, right? They brought Joy back in Vancouver because of that series specifically as well. Dallas, they were down 2-1, came back. This one, they were down 3-0, right? And we all thought it was done and over with. Like, we were ready to prep for... Um, we were ready to prep for uh, off-season stuff starting last week, essentially. Yeah. That did not happen, right? Like, I was fully confident this thing would have been done in five after it was 3-0, yeah, yeah. right? Did not happen. This game, they were down one nothing. And I'm like, yeah, but it's over because, like, that's how... Uh, I'm like, the key to the win is they have to score first, and which is what they did. <laughs> it's, 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 instantly make it 1-1. <laughs> instantly made it 1-1. One, one, and then... Absolutely. And that's, like... That's the Florida Panthers, not the Florida Panthers, that's the Edmonton Oilers yeah. season. Not even just the playoff run, that's what their season was. So This squad wasn't most supposed to make the playoffs when you see their first month of the regular season. So That's just what they've done all year. And then on top of that, I'm going to end it off on this once again. Brought in mid-season, now he's going to have a full training camp. Chris Knobloch did a hell of a job. The, like Big ballsy decisions he made. Like I said, the only decision I disagreed with was in game one, he brought back CC and Nurse together. Outside of that, I think every button he pushed... It, it paid off, right? Starting off, like I said many times, with the goalie cha- situation against the Canucks to making different lines. Well, even in times, this game, yeah. he did not put Evander Kane back in even though he could have been healthier, right? So shout out goes to them. Keep your heads he- held high. Like I have like massive so, respect. At the end so, of the day, we don't... So, so with you praising the Oilers, it means that your answer is yes and yes. My answer uh, is yes to their the best hope for Canada to win a cup still. My other answer is I have to see what happens in the offseason. That's a boring answer. Yes or no. That's that. I'm going to say no. I think there's too many talented teams um, in the Western Conference to get back to the Stanley Cup final. That's fair. Right? That's fair. Um, Vegas was unhealthy. No. And we know what you know what they were going to do. Vegas Colorado. Is, um, that's what's making it tough for the Canucks as well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> as a Canucks, that makes it tough. Like, yeah. I agree with you. Yes. They're, they're, um, I won't be surprised if they come back. Yeah. However... Um, I'm still concerned with Darnell Nurse if how he's gonna perform in that contract to that will help them that will hurt them from signing maybe upgrades as well. So with that being said, like I, I'm gonna say no to your first question, but yes that there's still Canada's best hope. Yeah, so fair shout out to the Oilers. Uh that's the only shout out you're gonna get from me. And uh yeah. let's move on to some actually before we move on. No. Um we gotta talk about I wanna I know, sorry, we no, we gotta do uh, one more thing. Sorry. Obviously, the biggest winner in this case, I'm not even going to say the biggest loser is Edmonton. Like, they're winners in my books in terms of what happened in the series. The biggest winner is obviously Florida Panthers, Paul Maurice, right? You know who else is the biggest winner? Luongo. Sure, but <laughs> he's part of Florida. That's why. The NHL. Oh, yeah. 100%. Right? We got to talk about this because... <laughs> yeah, that's true. Here's the reason, right? Obviously, it's a bad luck that the game seven was on a Monday. And then you have an NHL Awards on Thursday, NHL Draft on Friday, Saturday. I, I don't know about Sunday, but Friday, that, like essentially then. And then free agency starts Monday. So these two teams have to scramble to prep. That way, it looks kind of bad. However, we don't care. No, I, <laughs> Because I, I, what we just saw, listen, we don't care. Game 7, coming back from 3-0, right, with the best player in the world involved on a Canadian market where you have all of Canada watching, and now flip it to America, it would have been bigger if it was Boston or... Um, or um, New York New York if, um, from an American standpoint other obviously Toronto right ESPN's leading off with it first takes talking about it like a whole se- like many segments of it you got radios that d- shows that don't talk about it because you know what helped not just the storyline of this going to 3-0 it's because Dallas or Boston handled their business right so they had nothing else to talk about realistically yes JJ Redick got hired as a Lakers head coach as a st- big story that did not happen in the morning that happened later in the afternoon um, even the funny thing is off, off the like off season stuff, NHL's the one that made the big news. Yeah. So it's not even the so simple as this, right? Like even the last few years, I've seen it every single year. The NHL playoffs have been cooking that yeah. NBA playoffs in terms it's just, of closeness, in terms of watchability and and of like competitiveness. Less, and competitiveness. That's the best way way to put it. And uh, they, they did that once again, right? Like And it that's because of that. Like, yes, Florida isn't the biggest market for hockey, but it put eyes on Florida now. Right, this is what five years in a row of Florida teams involved in the Stanley Cup final. 
Yeah. So with that being said, like at the end of the day, like the NHL won in this case. NHL won. Eyes are on it. Pac- McAfee show, Pat McAfee show, ESPN, Fox, all these networks um, in America are listening to this, tuned into this. And with the, how this series went as well, like each game except for two of them being close, right? Yeah. Um, game seven living up to the hype that it did. It like so the NHL as a whole won because eyes were brought to it. Hopefully this. Was- they got Reggie Wayne tweeting out, "I don't know what the hell anything about hockey, <laughs> what the rules are." And it was kind of like how the World Cup in 2022 happened, where everybody's like, "Damn, soccer's now everybody's paying attention to soccer." It was crazy. In, in America, and then he had all the Qatar rumors and like getting yeah. And now here, million. like I said, with NHL, hopefully this help elevates more, which helps with the cap, which helps with everything, and hopefully casual fans tune in and see that like, listen, let's check out this McDavid dude who plays at Edmonton, and because of that. Let's check out what their path was. Oh, Vancouver. Oh, let's check out what Vancouver is doing. Oh, Dallas. Let's see what they're up to. But it helped uh, elevate what they did yeah. in Canada as well. Because as you said in our Canucks video that we did, McAfee said the battle of Northern, was it? In, in, top left Top Canada, left Canada. Essentially. Right? Yeah, there's only one thing that could have made this better. If Florida won in overtime. <laughs> I'm not that, like, I, know, I can't I complain about it. I know. I'm just, saying, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just saying that's how good it was. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah for sure. Here. Yeah, but yeah, no, I 100% agree with you. Don't need to add anything because you said everything, essentially. Yeah. But yeah, so that wraps up the NHL season. Sucks to say, but... Uh, uh, what a way to end. 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 Uh, but there's also what a way to start, and that is the NHL offseason. And we'll, we got three massive trades Three massive trades. Already. We already talked about Markstrom, so we'll quickly touch on it again. Markstrom is a devil. Check out, our U- check out our YouTube short and make sure you subscribe yeah. to the channel while you're at it. They have upgraded and the devil's upgraded in that. Um, the Flames got a decent return in terms of like marks from being old and wanting out. So officially it, rebuilding. And yeah, they're officially they what kind of already were. So with all the moves they made, it should be season. officially rebuilding. And then uh, on the Devils' perspective, you know they were lacking goalie talent. They played five goalies last year, and none of them were good. Uh, all just backup essentially. Yeah, and uh, they were looking to add goalie last year, but then obviously you know when they had to extend Meyer and all these guys as well. They were looking at that. But Marshall coming in fills in a void. Yes, he's old. Yes, he may not be as good anymore. Right? We, we don't, There's still question marks. Don't get me wrong. But overall, there is a chance the, that the Marshall could cook and the Devils cook. My final, as thoughts, well. my final thoughts on this before we move to the next bizarre trade, I guess I will say, is um, they just need to upgrade their defense a little bit more. Once they upgrade their defense a little bit more, we know Markstrom should be fine. Yes, Markstrom last time in the playoffs wasn't the greatest. But last year he was if it wasn't for Calgary, he was one of the best goalies in the league. You know you know what's gonna upgrade their defense? When Dougie Hamilton returns from a torn pectoral muscle. And then get injured again. Well, that's not gonna upgrade their defense. No, I mean <laughs> then I was wrong. With no, I mean like and then and then and he's gonna probably get injured again. I, I was gonna finish it off. Nah, and then he's probably gonna because he's nah, injury yeah. pro. That that sounds bad from you. But um yeah, so that's uh, that's one trade. The second trade that happened the same day last week was definitely so it's Pierre Luc Dubois straight up one for one for Darcy Kemper, L.A. Kings, and no no retention or anything like that. Nothing like that. And so essentially, my initial reaction is, you know, L.A. has added another goalie. Yes, he might not be a starter quality goalie, but another option, while saving three million in cap as well and long term, short and long term. Whereas Washington just being a, I guess a younger well, a team that's gonna like change direction in terms of they're gonna be. I don't gonna, know what Washington is doing. They're, they're, they're gonna they're gonna start building again their squad because obviously Ovechkin is not that guy anymore. Unfortunately, all he's doing is just chasing a, the Gretzky he's on the Gretzky chase. They're taking a shot on a guy, yes, who's very inconsistent. Um, who's type of player that's good one motivation. year, good good one year, sucks the next year. So right now the trajectory is he's gonna be good again this year, and they're taking a shot on a guy who's a little bit younger. Only issue is that they're taking on the full eight million. So yeah, no, for me it's like we were um after that King series, we're like, damn, like Pierre Luc Dubois had less points than Connor McDavid in the one playoff season. Right. I get it. He's Connor McDavid, but I'm just saying that's still crazy to say. Right. For like for a guy that got drafted top three, um, now on his fourth going into his fourth team, it doesn't look good, right? I, I came out and said like when that trade happened and they signed him, I'm like I'm questionable about this. I, and because of that, I'm like, I thought it was the worst contract in hockey. I didn't like the I didn't like the extension, but I definitely liked the trade. But I, I didn't like that. the trade either because they got rid of like three quality pieces. Yeah, I hope three solid pieces, but the 
did, 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 they have, did they really help the Kings? Like they were good. Yes, they were very they were, good they to were, the point where people were, thought the Kings were on the rise. They were they good. Made that trade. They were good, but they failed still. At the I, end of the day. That's fine. They still I'm failed. still on the. I'm still like dying on the hill where the, I think that was a horrible trade, and because Rob Blake agrees with me, he had to get off that thing quickly because he had to get off the books. A, a no trade clause was going to be kicking on July first. So the fact that we thought it was going to be, they ha- it was a possible buy on candidate on the first. Yeah, yeah. Year. I'm just saying this. Even if the LA Kings had not made the trade, I don't think they were going to do much anyways. That's fine, but like I would, so have I, preferred, think, I would have preferred not to for them not to make the trade to keep three quality players with them. That's just me. Yeah, but that's a, the different argument now. But um, no, going back to that, yes, he's twenty six, so there's still you're hoping for potential, but the guy needs motivation, right? Maybe the best guy to learn from is Ovechkin, who comes in out of shape half the time and still kills it. I don't know, but now you're paying him and Tom Wilson like what fifteen million a year together. That, to me, is a questionable thing, right? Like, the minute Ovechkin hits the record, hopefully next year, I think he's retiring. Yeah. ASAP, on the spot. And then, you know what's even worse? The Capitals bought Cap Friendly, and we can't even use that anymore. We'll have a different website. I don't no, know like, that sucks, <laughs> right? <laughs> Capitals are just ruining everything. <laughs> so, like, yeah, how shocked are you that this trade happened? I'm very shocked that PLD got moved, but at the end of the day, yeah, it was a bizarre trick. It was, a, it was out of here. <laughs> on the other side, other side, very quickly, they get off the books. Um, Darcy Kemper, again, did not have a good year because he was replaced me, by yeah. Charlie Lindgren. Question is now, do they go after another goalie with the cap space they created? UC Soros is out there. But I'm, um, I don't think Talbot's not getting much. So Kemper's getting five. The question now. is, are, can, they, all three, oh, here's the problem with them. They were playing a 1-3-1 because of their goalies. Right? So if you want a better goalie, then they could play a different t- style system. And Darcy Kemper. As- yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to look at their money. I mean, yeah, you gotta go for it. Don't get me wrong. Like what the Sanders did. Yeah. Which we're gonna talk about like legit a couple seconds here now. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, Kings. Uh, yeah, they're the clear winner right now. That's for sure. And yeah, they saved money. Yeah. They found a way to save money. Washington. In the meantime, let's just see what they do. Yeah, we, but, well, we don't know Washington. Um. Yeah. No, as you mentioned, right, I, I, the Sanders. reason why I stopped at UC Soros was because I was gonna say Linus Allmark, but Linus Mark Allmark officially traded. Uh, right before the Stanley Cup final, which was kind of bizarre in itself, but he got traded to the Ottawa Senators. Ottawa Senators, who you thought had uh, with uh, uh, Corpus Allo, that you gave it as them as a winner last year's offseason, uh, but people were obviously outside of yourself, people were questioning the contract length. And- the length, yeah, I, ca- I question the length too. Um, I'm just talking about the player itself. Corpus Allo is coming off a couple of good years. He was decent in Columbus, did well. In the Oilers series just so, against the Kings when they lost, was it two years ago now? Essentially a year, a year ago? Yeah. Or more than a year ago now. Trade. So they were going, they were getting a guy who was going to fill in a void, like a massive void in that. And Trade uh, is officially Lidus Allmark for Jonas Carpasolo, forward Mark Kastelik, and the 25th overall pick in this year's draft. Ottawa will also retain 25% of Carpasolo's $4 million cap hit. Um, Boston overall saves $1.165 million. Um, Linus Allmark is at the moment not looking. There's no extension uh, imminent. Uh, he's currently on the five million dollars on his last. How year. old is Allmark? Thirty. Yeah. So here's my thing with this trade. I like it that Ottawa's being aggressive. I know obviously Brady Kachuk was there at, at the Stanley Cup final supporting his brother. So obviously you know at least with like people say the Canucks and their thing, Quinn Hughes tasted the playoffs and twice. Yeah. You can say whatever you want about the bubble. Brady Kachuk could even get that. Yeah. Right? So, obviously, he's like, he's the captain. He's hungry. He wants to get this stuff rolling. So, you make a trade, who a former Vezina winner, right? My only question mark with this trade is, Linus Allmark looked great, but it was behind a Boston defense. Edmonton, or Ottawa's defense wasn't the greatest last Yeah, it's not, it's not good compared to Boston. But he's better than Corpus Allo, I'll say that. Yeah, in his last couple of years, he's, he has been better because he's one of Vezina. Yeah. Um. A great goalie tandem. No more now, but it, a lot of questions in March did come because Allmark deserved to start. Don't get me wrong. Like, but my other... They're, they're both were so good in yeah. the regular season. Like, they split the starts, Swayman and Allmark. See, that's my... And, like, they were going to split it in the uh the playoffs, but, like, when Swayman just took it to another level, it was just like, yes, Allmark's got to go, essentially. That's my other concern, though. Um... He did this with like 50 starts. Ottawa might play the breaks out of him. Okay, yeah, but the year before he played. I think more. it was st- it wasn't that much either. It was still like split. Yeah, but it was this year was legit split. Last like the year before checking. he actually played more. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll look I'll at his stats, but he's not, he didn't play, didn't play the breaks. I don't know where he's playing 60 games, but he's a Vesna winner. You're not a Vesna winner if you're playing 41 People are questioning games. his Vesna winner because of the amount of games he played compared to a guy like Shesterkin. Yeah, that's fair. Don't get me wrong. But I'm talking about there's a reason why he won the Vesna. It's because he played. Okay, so h- how much do you think he played then? In 2022, 2023, 2022 so games, they're probably spinning. This year was probably 41 40. So, yeah, he played 40 this year. Yeah. That year, it has to be like at least like eight more games, I would say. Okay, so you're still staying in the 40s, though. Yeah. So, yeah, 49. Can, Either yeah. way, he hasn't played 50 games in his career. Yeah. Unless they get a good backup goalie for him uh, to split again, that's my concern. I'm not saying. I'm not that's saying Omar doesn't. I'm. I'm just. Saying it's still a concern. Omar is a starter. <laughs> that, but that's, again, that's fair to say. But he's a starter. I'm not disagreeing with yeah, anything like with that. He's, he's the number one goalie but of a team. The concern is again, he hasn't played more than 50 games, and I'm sure he'll play more than 50 games with yeah, Ottawa. That's fair. 30, 30 plus year old, but by, by the time the season ends next year, and he's playing behind a defense that's not Boston. Yeah, that's fair. That's all. I'm. I agree with you 100. <laughs> percent but I'm just saying, Allmark is a number one goalie on a team. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, barring all these concerns, he is a bona fide number one goalie. That's just what Allmark so is. So how do you think he'll do? Just just out of right now, curiosity. Curiosity? I mean, I was really high on the Corpus Allo one, so I'm going to pump the brakes on Allmark now <laughs> yeah, as guess. well. So I, I would say he's a slight upgrade over Corpus Allo in terms of like per- what I'm going to expect performance-wise. Uh, he's an upgrade. I think Ottawa should be better. That's for sure. But in the Atlantic Division, is he but, enough to carry him? In, like how, yeah, I don't, how know, I don't know it's enough. I don't know if it's enough. That That's one thing. If I want to talk about Boston side, I like what they did in terms of freeing you know, up space. Freeing up space, you know, telling, giving full confidence and full control to Jeremy Swayman in the crease. And also, now that they freed up a little bit of space, and I don't know how much space they already have from before, they could take a swing at a center, a.k.a. Elias Lindholm. Elias Lindholm. For, well, they're getting four plus mil alone from the increased cap. Right as well. So this yeah. is like five point five one five mil right there. Yeah. Um, going back to Ottawa because Boston, we agree with that. I'm not going to go. Yeah, so to Boston. It. They're still yeah. going to be good. Uh, Ottawa, though, Steve Stavos is making decisions. Um, big. This is his first big move. They're also linked with a ton of brothers. So if Chris Tanev is there, then yes, I'll agree with you. Hundred percent. All yeah. Mark. Um, in general, um, it should be a lot better in that sense, right? I think Chikrin is staying, but who knows? Him and Shabbat, something is going to happen there. They have. A, Drake Batherson's a defender? No. I forget who the other defender is. That's really good. Sanderson. Sanderson, yeah. Um, so, yeah, like at the end of the day, they're still a good young team. They got a good veteran goalie. Uh, and now, again, the question marks, me and you both agree, are valid, very valid, because we haven't seen him have Demko-type starts. Right? Yeah. And then we'll see how, because maybe it might be beneficial for him. Maybe that's, but also because of the rest he may have. But at the same time, his body's used to that at that age. I don't know. I'm not a. I'm not a. Yeah, man. Doctor. Maybe, but. maybe him having less starts kind of um, elongates his career a little bit more. True, but as well. Yeah. No. Overall, um, so the off season has begun for the NHL, and hopefully before the, N- the playoffs have ended. <laughs> uh, the NBA, um, as well, is already underway. So we'll see what happens. That sucks. But NHL is winning. But yeah, NHL is really winning. Make sure uh, comment your guys' early thoughts on next year's Stanley Cup winner. Uh, who do you think will win the Stanley Cup next year? Obviously, free agency hasn't begun yet, but it's just as off the bat, assuming everybody's healthy and everything. So just comment that down below. Make sure you guys uh, subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.